Red Skull and Magneto are two of the essential villains from Marvel and they've committed several atrocities worldwide. But the two have much more in common than we would have ever expected, considering they have been associated with each other's history in a rather tragic manner. While Red Skull has a purely evil motive, Magneto's tendency to make mutants the primary race in the world doesn't make him less evil either. The two characters have been pitted against each other at various occasions and these storylines are pretty significant moments within their arc. Let's look at the times when Red Skull and Magneto met and the variety of outcomes these interactions had. Be warned, this could be a pretty tragic video. Now before we go into our video, we do have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means an awful lot. Thank you very much, now let's begin. Magneto meets Red Skull, the first encounter. The two comic book events that pitted these two Marvel villains against each other are now some of the most significant comic book arcs. Marvel's crossover event, Acts of Vengeance, from the pages of Captain America's issue 367 from Mark Grunewald and Kieran Dwyer, marks the very first of these two interactions. Here we witness Magneto paying a visit to Red Skull upon discovering that he is the same individual who'd been working with the Nazi government. Magneto lost his parents and suffered a lot himself at the hands of that regime and finding out about the Red Skull only infuriated him more so he comes to punish him for his atrocities in the past. When Magneto confronts Red Skull, the Nazi villain says that they are very much alike because both of them are fighting for the race to be superior on Earth. Red Skull mentions the various events where Magneto killed innocent civilians to save the mutant race. He tries to shake hands with him but Magneto doesn't give in, attacking him. However, the problem for Red Skull is that he has no idea how powerful Magneto is and all his button traps for the mutant fail as he destroys them quite quickly. As Magneto follows the escaping Red Skull, he encounters the controller but it is no bother for him as he quickly pushes this villain off. Similarly, all the other attempts at stopping Magneto, like the giant robot spider and multiple Red Skull robots, fail to do their task too. Magneto manages to get through them very quickly. It's almost as if Red Skull had a plan if someone ever decided to go against him but he never really thought someone like Magneto would be there to take on the attacks. Meanwhile, Captain America arrives at the same site to see if the same Red Skull he had fought during the war was there, only to discover that somebody had come there before him and unleashed havoc. As Magneto reaches the end of all the various traps that Red Skull had set for him, he finds some tracks and decides to control them to stop Red Skull and his carriage. By the time Cap reaches the tracks, he finds some blood but nobody about, left there to wonder what must have happened. Finally, we see that Red Skull is in prison underground, where Magneto arrives to tell him that he's in a former fallout shelter, which is 20 feet under the earth and will serve solitary confinement there. Magneto had removed any means of escape for the Nazis and put 10 gallons of water as the only means of survival during his time of confinement. He states that Red Skull will now experience the suffering of the billions he had made to suffer himself and by the end, Red Skull would wish that Magneto had just killed him. So yes, this was a pretty easy turnout for Magneto as Red Skull hardly posed any threat to him whatsoever and he was able to capture him and make him suffer. However, the relationship between these two characters is typical because they get pitted against one another. However, the next time round, Red Skull might be a little more equipped than Magneto and of course, we would have expected that. Magneto captured by Red Skull, the second encounter. The two villains will face each other again in the Avengers and X-Men Axis crossover event and this time Magneto will be reminded of his past much more painfully than last time. From the writings of Cullen Bunn, Magneto appears a lot more driven than the earlier renditions and his past trauma makes him a lot more vulnerable than we would have expected. In Magneto number 9, we witness that Magneto has returned to Genosha, which has been transformed into an absolute hell with Red Skull taking over the island alone with these S-Men and Ahab converting it into a mutant re-education camp, which feels like a concentration camp for mutants. When Magneto looks at these atrocities that have been unleashed on the mutants and inhumans here, he can't help but remember what he witnessed in Auschwitz, with bodies lying in heaps everywhere. But Red Skull isn't truly powerless as he's managed to harvest the powers of Charles Xavier using the psychic's brain and using his abilities, he ensures that none of the individuals manage to fight back against him. Magneto sees the pain all around him and he is saddened by the memories of what Genosha was supposed to be for mutants, a haven. He realises that he must take matters into his own hands and tries to help some of the prisoners only to discover that they are powerless under the control of Red Skull. He is reminded of his time in concentration camp in Auschwitz where he had made plans to kill Hitzig, the commander, but never really managed to go through with the plans because his powers had not yet reached their full potential. But he decides to kill Red Skull this time before the atrocities can continue. 
continue as he prepares for his attack. The S-Men discover and attack him from behind. Since Magneto is very much motivated towards killing Red Skull, the S-Men easily defeat him and they imprison him. When he wakes up, we find that his helmet has been removed and Red Skull studied him to bring back Hitzig to make him go through mental torture. As Hitzig tortures Magneto, he decides to go into the better memories he has to escape this torture that was being unleashed on him. However, somehow these memories are ruined as Red Skull's abilities manage to discover Magneto's various attempts at hiding. Some of these memories are significant moments in his life and Red Skull butchers each of them. It only makes Magneto weaker as each memory is crushed. Finally, he comes to the one memory where he lost his daughter to a fire and he was prevented from saving her. This only makes him stronger though. Magneto uses this memory to pinch the very realization of why he does what he does, allowing him to wake himself up from this deep state that he'd been put under during the mental torture. When he wakes up, he realizes that the failure of mental torture has now forced MZ into opting for physical torture. But right before he can, the rogue Havoc and Scarlet Witch arrive, attack MZ and release Magneto from captivity. Magneto bites into a small vial under the skin of his hand which contains mutant growth hormone and this returns his powers. Yes, this time Red Skull was prepared to face his old rival and he managed to bring about suffering that might have been similar to the kind that Magneto was brought to as a younger man. But the story doesn't end here. Magneto kills Red Skull or did he just unleash a monster? Even though they managed to save him, Red Skull did manage to put Havoc, Rogue and the Scarlet Witch under his spell. In Uncanny Avengers number 25, we see Red Skull controlling the other X-Men, particularly Wanda, and preventing Magneto from making any moves. Once again, he tries to remind Magneto that the two aren't very different from one another, trying to make him understand. However, the method doesn't work for Magneto, and he uses Ahab's weapons to strike down and knock down the Red Skull for a while. Wanda and the others are freed and seize the opportunity to attack the S-Men, but Magneto turns much more ruthless as he looks at the means Red Skull has used to absorb those psychic powers. While Wanda comes to terms with everything Red Skull says, she realizes that Magneto has a history that somewhat works up to what he did in the present. His actions are derived from the very things he had to experience in his childhood at the concentration camp. Even though the X-Men want to capture the enemy, Magneto might not take that route and opt for a much more violent means. As Magneto shows her the suffering Red Skull and his people had brought to the mutants, he tells her that the very non-violent measures she took are what allowed mutants to suffer. And in saying that, he attacks the S-Men and crushes them with every shard and piece of metal that he can find around. Finally, when it comes to Red Skull, he resorts to not using his powers because he realizes that the very threat the mutants pose to him and his posse are in his abilities. He lands blows while the other X-Men try to stop him, failing as he manages to push them back. Finally, he picks up a piece of rock and drops it on Red Skull's head with blood splashing out all around. When Rogue arrives on the scene, she stares at him and shrieks in horror that Magneto has conducted this attack out of pure fury. He justifies his actions by stating that he has now saved the lives of several mutants, but Rogue tells him that what he has done makes him no different from Red Skull himself. As they remain unaware, Red Skull rises. This time, he turns into something Magneto might not have been able to stop. Red Skull stands up and says Magneto did not kill evil incarnate. He unleashed an onslaught of it. By killing Red Skull, Magneto had released something profound inside Xavier's mind that had proven out of control of the psychic himself. Onslaught is the psionic entity combining the darkest elements of Xavier and Magneto. Well, imagine you have the evil version of two of the most powerful mutants combined and it's now being controlled by Red Skull. You get a ruthless villain. The final fight, Magneto versus Red Skull, who became Onslaught. Now we turn to the chapter of Marvel history that will further make you understand how complex the character of Magneto is. Onslaught manages to release a psychic war of hate plague across the globe, turning people against one another. But in a rather weird fashion, those who haven't been affected by the wave continue to attack Magneto because he caused all of this. If he hadn't tried to kill Red Skull, then there was a chance that Xavier could have been saved and things would have turned out much more well, differently than the present state of affairs. In the Axis series, the Avengers are teaming up with the X-Men to arrive at Genosha upon discovering what Red Skull is doing now. The X-Men reunite and decide to go against the giant demonic figure of Onslaught, but things go wrong immediately. Onslaught released the Sentinels that Tony Stark had designed himself based on the weaknesses of each of his companions. 
Thanks so much Tony Stark for working on your inventions that always seem to turn against the heroes more than the villains. Finally, the Avengers give in after realising it's impossible to stop Onslaught under the complete control of Red Skull. But Magneto has a plan. He realises that he is a lot more than the villain he's supposed to be and decides to take this opportunity to unite all of the villains against Onslaught. This moment is significant, considering it changes how the villains are perceived in Marvel. Throughout mutant history, Magneto was always forced to make decisions that others wouldn't have taken when protecting his kind. Doctor Strange and Wanda team up under Magneto to launch an inversion spell on Onslaught, and it works as Onslaught turns into Red Skull once again. But Magneto realises that he's still being looked at as the villain and sneaks away from the ordeal. Even though the inversion spell worked, Wanda's magic proved to be too effective as it turned all the heroes into exhibiting villain-like behaviours and all the villains instead became good people. One particular example of this was when Carnage began to go saving people and Spider-Man realised that this was a lot more spooky than the usual way of things. Red Skull, the person who had caused all of this trouble, had turned into his usual form within the narrative but now, after the more significant effects of the inversion spell, he turns into White Skull. Literally. As the new inversion spell takes hold, Iron Man is pitted against Magneto, and even as they continue their battle, White Skull begs Magneto to stop and not kill Iron Man. Yeah, this is an ironic moment within the whole storyline. Finally, Doctor Doom, White Skull and an inverted Wanda act under the inversion spell so that everything can be returned to normal once again. But some things don't ever change, just like Magneto, who never impacted the version spell and only changed his will upon realising the absolute chaos it could bring forth. While the heroes celebrate their successes through the ordeal, Magneto realises that people have still managed to sneak out and will continue their fight against evil behaviour. Doom has taken Red Skull captive. It seems that he will be using the Nazi villain for some planning related to his rule of Latveria. Even though this story arc ends with not much of an interaction between Magneto and Red Skull, it sheds a lot of light on Magneto's arc. While the Red Skull becomes the hook, Magneto's story arc and his tragic past become the very fabric that gives us an idea of the person he is and how he has changed his ways based on the situation he's in. This results in him finally saving the world. Tragically, he will still be looked at as the villain, but at the end of the day, we know he is someone who can change based on what's happening around him, the context. Marvelous Verdict Even though Magneto's story arc has always been associated with a tragic past, there have hardly been proper explorations of this arc. Red Skull became the very means of giving us a window into the life of Magneto as we saw that the connection between the two was associated with their past. What makes it all the more interesting is that they are in fact quite similar while having opposing views in various aspects. The two will cross paths again because it ends up being pivotal moments for Magneto, like in that final arc where we see him change his ways because of the situation that Red Skull had created for him. Even though that final situation was about Onslaught, it gave us a fair way of looking at whether Magneto is a villain or not. And if you liked our content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.